All right, all right. Well, trying to decide my next project here. I've got a ton of stuff I've been doing. Uh, started digging around and ran into this. Remember, I had uh, worked on this compressor on a previous video. And you can see where I replaced uh, the tubing here and the tubing down there. And I was about to check it out. And you can see it's holding air, but it won't go over 90. It's this relief here. It just keeps popping out. Um, so it's a minor change, but uh, after, after looking at that, it's like, you know, I'm going to start working on the other ones because you remember I had three of these four actually one is my personal one so I uncovered this it has been sitting under a tarp for quite a few months and I think I'm gonna try to get one of these running I think I'm gonna get this roll air uh, going I'll see if I can get the engine started it looks pretty rusty uh, but it looks all surface rust you know it's not like no rust throughs. I mean, it'll be a big test once I get it running and uh, get some air in there and make sure there's no leaks. Um, yeah, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this aside and we'll see if we can get this sucker running. All right, so this one has definitely been used. Um, yeah, this holding up. This rear grill in place. And I'll take that off, see if it's missing some bolts or something, whatever. We can take that off. I'd order to replace the air cleaner. I had an extra one. It's kind of small. I'd like a bigger one on there, but I think this will work for now. Um, they just had it plugged up. And that's about it. Everything else, I'm just going to start checking everything. Is this. Uh, Trying to see how much if we can see any oil in there. I can't tell this thing is pretty glazed over. Well, let's check the rest of it here. Well, it's bone dry. That's a good thing actually. And it actually looks really clean. There's no rust, no nothing. That's good. Let me see if there's any oil in it. It's got oil, but it's definitely a little low. It's just, you can barely see it at the tip here. Can you see what I'm doing? Nope. Yeah, you can see it just share, barely shows up on the tip. Uh, whew. That's pretty nasty. This is just flaking off. You can see. That's pretty nasty. And this stuff, it, it's just crumbling in my hands. I'm going to get rid of that part of it. Well, what do you think? I think I'm going to put some oil in it. I know it needs to be drained. Um, let me drain the crap that's in it. I'll put some oil in it because it doesn't take a whole lot of oil anyway. I'll put some oil in it and uh, and then we'll check out the carb, see if I can spray some starting fluid in there and get it to crank. So I just topped it off with some oil. see if it'll even try. Not sure if that's all getting down in there. I don't think it's getting down there. So I think I'm going to take the spark plug off. See what it looks like and then 
squirt some of this two cycle oil down in there give it a little get a little lube going on in there I'm sure this thing has been sitting there for a long long time trying to get some of these leaves out so they don't fall into the into the crankcase well that's what it looked like Yeah, it'll probably need a new plug. Let's see if it'll turn over. If not, then I'll check and see if we're getting spark at all. You know, I had it on off a minute ago. Now it's on. I'll be down. so far all right so there's the plug okay this is going to be kind of hard to see I don't know if you're going to be able to see it it's hard for me to see it when I'm always outside. Let me twist that around. I am not seeing any spark. I'm just finger tighten it for now. I guess we'll have to. Uh, take the cover off here on the front and we'll check the magneto. Alright, let's take this front cover off. We'll start with the pull start and then we'll take the, uh, the frame off. Yeah, we'll clean all that up and spray some WD-40 on the... Alright, let's see if we can take this off, turn that off. Well, that's just really... Bunch of junk in there. What's up, Katie? What you doing, buddy? I think I'm going to make sure this switch is working. That looks kind of funky in there. I knocked some of the crap out of there, but it still needs to be hosed down. So let's check for continuity here. So if we go from one of these ends, let's see, there's off. Okay, so, so with it off, it's connecting. On should be opening the circuit. Yep, there we go. So it opens the circuit so it's not grounding. When it's off, it closes the circuit. Okay, so the switch is good. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take everything off.
this case I am going to go online look at this and see what the specs are on it so when I get my multimeter out I'll check it and see if it's in spec so alright so I looked online Let me get the multimeter ready And oh man, that sun's bright. So let's check it real quick. So I looked online and it's showing that uh, so primary 0.8 to 1 ohm and secondary is 5.9 to 7.1 kilo ohms. And what that means, so the primary is going to be from like one of these posts over to this wire and I'm getting 1.4 so it's a uh, it's 0.4 over it's supposed to be from, from 0.8 to 1 I don't know if you can see that there's so much glare Yeah, between one, there we go, 1.4. So that's out of spec. And the secondary says 5.9 to 7.1 kilo ohms. So the secondary, let's see if I remember this. Oh, it goes from, let's go from that same post over to your spark plug. And I'm reading 17.85 kilo ohms. Whoo! Boy, that's way out of spec, huh? It's supposed to be between 5.9 and 7.1 kilo ohms, and I'm reading 17.85. So, so yeah, it's bad. Um, so I'll get online and order one. But that's how you check it. The primary is from this post to your to that little spade where your kill switch goes. That's your primary. The secondary is from the post over to your spark plug. All right, so it's been some time since I've worked on this uh, air compressor. This stuff I had just have tucked away parts for a tractor that I'm. That I'm going to be working on. Um, so this has been sitting here and I do want to get it running. This is one I potentially would probably keep myself once I get it all cleaned up. But So I got the kit and it actually came with the magneto. There's the replacement magneto for it, air cleaner, uh, let's see, gaskets, and the carburetor and then all the fuel line and linkage uh, if needed so that's good I can put all this back together and see if I can get the engine running and then uh, then I'll move on and fool with the with the actual pump um, as it looks like I can't tell if there's oil in it or not but I'll move in that direction once I get the uh, once I get the engine running and uh, and cross my fingers. Yeah, the tank the tank looks actually pretty good. It looks better on the inside than on the outside. Uh, <laughs> so let me get all this stuff ready. I'm going to go ahead and clean all this stuff off before I start putting anything back on um, you can see I had it plugged here so that no rain will be getting into it but yeah so let's get started let's put the new carb on so before I bolt this on I'm gonna clean all this off make sure there's good contact 
believe that goes up under here. And there's our trip wire there. And let's gap that. Let's see. Alright, there's the magnet. This piece that goes on here. And gasket, which way does this go? Goes that way. Good. Let's get the governor uh, connected here. All right. And the choke lever I already put on. It's just a place it on. No big deal. Let's see which way did it go? That way. Yes. So there's the new magneto and the carburetor. So I need to put uh, this cover back on and connect their, our switch. There we go. Here's the switch. Let's hook this up. All right. We are getting there. Let's put our pull rope assembly. Put a little gas in there, not much. I didn't, maybe a quarter of a tank, but uh, okay. So the fuel line is on. I think choke is on this way, isn't it? I can't remember. Let's take a look at this one. So choke is on that way choke is off that way. Alright, well, let's go to a few pulls, see if it'll try to crank. Uh, if not, then we'll check for spark. And that is on. Let me back up here a little bit. Seeing some fumes coming out of the out of the muffler.
some leakage here. Where's that coming from? Okay. one of these things that was uh, leaking out that little splitter so let's try it again So you can see I took this coupling off, so that's where all the air is coming out of. Um, but that's good, so we know the pump's working. Uh, the engine is up and running. It took a little while to warm it up and get it to where it would idle, which it's doing it now. So, uh, what's next? I know a lot of the... Uh, the rumbling was coming here on the cage. So I think I'll take this cage off the cover and hope oh, and you can see where they had this rigged up. But it's still just rattling around. So I'll take that off, see if I can secure that. What else? I'll double check. I can't remember checking the oil on the engine but that's no problem I can do that and the pump is the big question I want to know you can't see through this little can't see a this little bubble level thingy but I might as well just go ahead and drain it out I think I have the, the correct oil to put back in um, I might as well take all that off, drain it out, put new oil in, and see if I can free this up. Looks pretty dirty in there. We'll clean this up and see if we can put it back on without it leaking. Then we can check uh, pressure and all that good stuff, right? Well, we're getting there. But I think I'll go ahead and change this oil. I 
was hoping to get this cap off, but the whole thing's coming off. Let's see if I can do something about that. Yeah, I'm glad I'm changing it. You can see there's, it's full of water. Nice, huh? All right, so got the engine running. Uh, the pump is pumping and I did drain the oil out and I put some new oil at some uh, synthetic uh, compressor oil specifically and from what it looks like it can't be more than uh, 30 weight max but it was synthetic so it seemed kind of thin but I'll give it a shot and the level here was really hard to to gauge you can see how discolored it is but I think it's like right in here somewhere and and I guess it's guesswork right now but when I you if you grab a, a quart uh, bottle of oil and lay it down beside you know it's like okay that makes sense it, from here down it looks like the volume of about a quart you know and uh, so I'll run it like that and uh, and then check it again after we get all this running. But I decided um, before I go any further, because uh, I do want to you know take take all this off, make sure all this is bolted down and tight so it won't rattle. Take this off, uh, probably even repaint it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna clean it up big time. Um, get rid of all this oil that's hanging around and just clean everything off as, as good as I can um, then we can see where really the oil leaks are if if any at all because that looks like uh, down through here and on this side down here you can see where it's uh, and once I take this off then I'll make sure all these couple bolts were kind of loose but uh, if they still leak, then I'll take it off and replace that gasket, you know, that goes all the way around. So that's the plan. Let me clean it up, and I'm going to use the old Super Clean. This is the foaming stuff. Um, it comes in a spray bottle like this and uh, in an aerosol can. Um, but this stuff, it, it really works pretty good. And in this case, I'm going to do the foaming so that I can see it stick and see where it's at and really pack it on so let's get started Not bad, huh? That was just spraying it on and hosing it off with the regular hose. No power washing, no nothing. You can see all the rust that's underneath there, but it took all that oil and caked up gunk. It took it off. You know, I always used to use um, 
what is it, the engine cleaner gunk, I think it was. And, uh, but you know what? Given this is biodegradable, it's got my vote. It's good stuff. All right, so you can see I took the cover and the little grill, whatever you want to call it. Um, got it off. So I'll finish cleaning all that stuff off. You can see this was, uh, let's see, it was that way. And your flywheel here, I had to use a, a gear puller and had to torch it to get it off. Um, but it came off. There's Mr. Kitty. All right, so you can see I'm cleaning it up. I'm treating everything for rust here. You can see here's the cover itself. And I had already treated it for rust and put a coat of that uh, Rust-Oleum uh, rust converter, I think it's called. Um, and it works pretty good. You can see that trailer over there. If you've seen one of my past videos, um, I did the same thing with that. That was uh, a year ago, and it's been sitting out here waiting for the final coat of paint, but you can see it's holding up really well. But anyway, so I'm going to continue on. I'll set this aside, treat it for rust. I guess I can paint that, paint this. I'll finish getting all the crud off of this thing, and, and it'll be, be ready to repaint also. We're getting close. Well, there she blows. Uh, the paint job is finished. I guess that's as far as the cosmetics I'm going to do. It uh, doesn't look like a roller anymore unless you know your stuff. But, you know, I just didn't feel like going and trying to match the paint and, and all that good stuff. I just, you know, treated it for rust and, and painted over. Um, I guess if somebody from Roller out there, if if they want it to look like a roll air, then send me the paint and the decals and all that good stuff and I can restore it back to, to factory. But, uh, but as far as it stands, you can see I just painted over everything. Just wanted to make sure I you know, stop all the rust. Um, I used engine paint you know, for the high heat stuff here on the, on the pump. What else? This here, it's very sturdy now. We don't have to worry about all that rattling that we heard before. Uh, that's good and solid. Yeah, so I just painted over everything to try to, you know, slow down any surface rust that was going on. So, and I did fix this piece here. It was leaking before. What else? Uh, this here, this is about the only thing I can see. It feels like it's it's sticking, um, and that's to control the the pressure going to your tools. Uh, so I might have to replace that. But but other than that, engine's running good. The pump is pumping. Got new oil on everything. Everything is pretty sound. No more leaks. So it's ready to go. Well, all right, I guess that does it for this video. Um, it did take a little work, but it just looked so bad because it was, you know, all, you know, gunked up and rust everywhere, surface rust, that is. Um, but once we got everything running, I mean, you can see the potential there. It was, everything was there, and, you know, Roll Air really makes some, some good compressors to begin with, right? So it just needed a lot of TLC, a few fixes here and there, and then some cosmetic work. But uh, so it's it's good to go. I mean, these are really good compressors, especially if you're out there somewhere where you don't have uh, electricity, no power. 
and uh, so I'll probably be keeping this one and uh, I have a couple more I'm gonna sell ones in Ingersoll Rand uh, I'll probably sell that one off I was gonna keep it but uh, I think I'll keep this roll air uh, then I have another one a yellow I forget what brand it is Apache or something like that that uh, it's working but it is kinda hard to find parts but uh, if you know what you're doing you can repair them right uh, so it did take a little work you know and I didn't do it all in one shot this was taken you know I'd work a few hours here a, a few there and over a you know two or three months time um, I finally got around and said okay I'm gonna finish this sucker off so <laughs> so it is done so off to the next project so uh, as always uh, thanks for watching be sure to subscribe and watch my next video